one of the most significant works of medieval literature. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler for your review of Piers Plowman. From somewhere between 1370 to 1386, uh, we have the allegory of Piers Plowman, which makes it a little bit older than Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. Uh, there are several versions, um, which are generally divided, well, the book, these versions are generally divided into 20 passes, plus a prologue, which these are then divided into eight visions. I read the B text, so there are also A, C, and uh, some will say a Z text as well. The Norton version has many extra studies after the text, and the text itself has the original Middle English facing a modern translation, so it's very useful. Um, the original alliterates, um, but does not rhyme, and the so-called author is William Langland, though I have not mentioned him previously because um, there's hardly any biography about this uh, Langland fellow, and he may not have existed. We don't exactly know who wrote it, to be honest. Uh, there are hints in the text and a little bit outside um, for it be attributing the text to someone but it's uh well it's not super solid so this story well i don't review a lot of classics but i should i should talk a little bit about this the story starts with the narrator laying down on the bank of a river and falling asleep this is of course an allegory one where our narrator seeks to be the best christian he can and thrown in with some satire about his medieval society starting with the prologue where representative um, heaven and hell are shown in the world of humanity this is a tale of um well there's a cat, and the cat is the king and the rodents are the people who want to be warned of the cat. Uh, Vision 2 introduces Piers the Plowman, who is helped and is plowing by the penitent seven deadly sins. So references to Gregory's pastoral care in Christian scripture are made. Um, the first reference uh, to Robin Hood is also found uh, within this book. Um, it's, um, and overall, I'm not going to go into every passage here, but uh, it's very weird at times. And it is a great allegorical critique of the church, but it's still very much in the in the words of <laughs> Philip Chase, A Quest for Faith. Um, I would say it's not as entertaining as the Canterbury Tales or even something like Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, um, which are probably the other more famous Middle English texts. Um, it's kind of on the level of Dante's Inferno to me, um, besides their differences, but mostly because of their topic. Um, both of these are, I would say, actually outdone by Boethius's Constellation of Philosophy, however. Um, that's just my cruddy opinion, of course. And again, I don't normally talk about um, medieval or classic texts all that much, but this one was an interesting one. I was glad to finally get to it, and so I thought I'd mention it. Um, so let me know if you've read uh, Piers Plowman. Uh, let me know if, how I should spell this in the review, because I'm really like, contemplating if I should do the U-G-H or just the W. Um, I'll probably go U-G-H, um, <laughs> but, you know, I don't want people to get mad at me or confused. Um, and let me know if you've read any of the versions besides... Uh, the B text, if you've read A, C, or the Z. Um, and if you've done it, maybe in the Middle English, I, I mostly relied on the Modern English, actually. Um, I would like to go through and do more of the Middle English, especially since Middle English is uh, something I'm trying to get more comfortable with. But anyways, this is Liam Williams, I see him. I will catch you next time.